Good evening. Here we are with our special edition episode of the NoodleCast. We are going to be discussing here spoilers uh, for the movie Glass. So if you are watching us live right now, uh, just know that we are going to be talking spoilers. So be careful with that. Uh, we appreciate everybody who's out with us. And uh, here we go. Brian, give us a quick review of Glass. I, I want to make sure everybody understands what movie we're looking at here. So this is the third, uh, <laughs> the third movie in the trilogy for M Night Shyamalan. Um, has Bruce Willis, James McAvoy, and uh, Samuel L. Jackson in it, and they all get uh, captured, I guess, and put in a mental institution, thinking they have a uh, mental issues because they believe that they're superheroes. Um, and it is about Samuel L. Jackson trying to get everybody to break out and show the world that the superheroes exist because, um, and that they are, they're people too, I guess. And that, um, uh, to pit, uh, Bruce Willis and James McAvoy against each other in front of the world with as many cameras on them as possible, um, to finally come out and say, yes, the superheroes, superheroes are a thing, not just in movies and, and comic books, that comic books really are depictions, exaggerated depictions of, things that you would find in real life. That's kind of the main, the main thesis of the movie, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So this is our spoiler discussion after all that muting and unmuting and all that stuff. Sorry about that. But um, so if you don't want the movie ruined, leave now. Yes. And this will be, this is a separate from our live show. So if you're hanging out on our live show and you stuck around, it's because you want to be spoiled. So, we will spoil you. We will spoil you. <laughs> so do we want to start with, um, I don't know, do we want to just jump right to the end or kind of start at the beginning and, and work our way there with some thoughts? Because the end is kind of the biggest thing. But So I my biggest, I think, gripe that I had with the entire movie, um, besides the ending, which I, I agree, we'll talk about that in a minute, Um with with Samuel L. Jackson's character, um, he figures out how to get out of his room, right? And they find him out of his room at one point. And uh, then he, you know, it's one of those flashback things where you see how the mastermind does everything. Yeah. And he, go, he goes and does this and this. And he goes into this room and does this. Um, so uh, I think the biggest gripe I had was he's as he's going through and doing everything, he figures out that he needs to go into um, the camera room and delete the footage of him going to all these other places. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he deletes all of that. How does he delete him coming out of the camera room after he's deleted him going into the camera room? And when he comes out of the camera room, why didn't they go, wait a minute. He came out of the camera room. What was he doing in there? And then they go in there and you know what I mean? Like maybe he set up a timer. He wrote, he wrote code on there yeah. though. Um, so I think the code. Yeah. But the code he wrote was to be able to, to send it out. I, I mean, I guess it's feasible to think that he, he figured out a way to make it so that it wouldn't record him coming out. But I just, maybe there wasn't a camera on the camera room. According to her, <laughs> the entire place outside yeah, and no, inside I was covered with cameras. <laughs> I I don't know. I just I'm like there, and I think that was my maybe he set thing. it up for a delay. But yeah, he, whatever. you know, he took some footage and cut and paste and you know photoshopped it in or whatever. Like I that. think it. Yeah, that's just he's a really super too. smart guy. That's his yeah. shtick. It's not about his intelligence. <laughs> it's about it's about timing for me. It's like, a whole it, plot hole. Yeah, yeah I just yeah. I think that there were too many plot holes. As I'm watching this movie, I'm going, wait, what? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? What about that? I don't know. Um, that was my thing. Besides the ending, that was my thing. Do you guys have any gripes or anything that you liked um, in the middle of it that before we get to the ending? I really liked the stuff with David Dunn where he was walking around um, playing vigilante and trying to yeah, um, going out on his little patrols and and find stuff. I wish there was a little bit more with that. Actually, um, uh, it well, was. It, it, it was, seems like they they do that for like what, like maybe ten minutes. Yeah, and then, <laughs> and oh, then there, it's like, there's all right, these... you're all in a loony bin. Yeah, and it's like I think that's like to your point. 
they don't really explore his character much. It's and that's where I talk about like they assume you know who he is going into yeah. this. You know, and, they, well, they assume you've seen Unbreakable and you know, like, all right, he's got these abilities because he basically just shows up, does one patrol and scenes, uh, you know, McElvoy or McElvich or whatever the hell his name is. <laughs> um, they see him like, you know, running around with his tracksuit and, you know, he brushes up against them and like, oh, shit, you're the guy that's murdering children. Uh, and, yeah. and it goes. From I don't there. know if I necessarily had a problem, though, with them assuming you've seen the other two. No, because yeah. not, again, not necessarily, but I'm just saying like they it would have been nice if they would have explored his character more, like showed him off more rather than like it's 10 minutes of him. And then it's like, all right, we're in the loony bin. And, you know, there's a lot of staring at a silent Elijah. Yeah. I thought yeah. um, him actually in the room uh, with the, the captive cheerleaders and they, their first confrontation with him and the beast um was good it it's low powered i guess because that's the type of universe this is they're just punching each other and throwing each other yeah. there's not any there's not a fireworks factor or anything like that but um it it f felt like what we wanted to see maybe at the end of the movie and not necessarily like the first thing and then all of a sudden the movie switches to um you're locked in a mental institution the entire time kind of thing like him him tracking the beast and finding the beast um i don't know it was just more interesting as a climax i guess than the the opening to the yeah, movie yeah i would agree with that yeah i would have expected to see that more like what if they the escaped at different times and then he couldn't find them again and they had to use the his power to to find them or something like that that would ignore the whole uh the other twist at the end with the shamrock yeah. society or whatever but um but also, uh, with his character specifically, he's been doing this vigilante thing for 19 years, and by the end of the while. by the end of the first movie, he was pretty bought into the theory that he was a superhero guy. Um, that I mean, that was kind of the whole arc of the first movie is that he believes he's a superhero, and. I don't know how long they were in the mental institution, but that amount of time in the mental institution. And she was able to break him? And she was able to convince yeah. him, yeah. oh, maybe this isn't real. I'm a normal second guy guess. and all like, that. Maybe like, you're just You've been doing this for magician. 19 years. Yeah, your strength in and of itself should be sufficient for you to go, yeah, you're full of crap, lady. Yeah. I mean, like, at what point, why did, why did they never go, okay, show me how strong you are. Pick yeah. that up. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she's she's trying so hard to convince well, him that he's not. if you look in the movie, it's because they don't, their, their, perp, their purpose is they want to try and see if they can convince them that they're not superheroes and that they have a problem and they have this procedure that basically, you know, I'm going to assume takes away their abilities in some way. And, and basically, it's a way of controlling them because they do know they have these powers. And the whole purpose of this society is we are uncomfortable with people having abilities that most other people don't. And a way well, to keep that in control is to mentally neuter them and otherwise convince them that, oh, you have a well, problem, maybe you should think otherwise. So that explains well, why they they don't, aren't interested in being convinced, but that doesn't explain why they were able to successfully convince. Right. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean, at, at some point, why didn't, you know... With as strong as as Bruce Willis's character was, why didn't he break the chains? Why didn't he, uh, you know, sh sh pick up something? And uh, you know what I mean? Like, even though she well, didn't have necessarily... the, uh, the fear of that, you know, water contraption that would, you know, pump they were a lot in, of water in there. They were in the one room that didn't have that. The pink room. The pink room, yeah. Didn't that have the the flashy lights though? And didn't that also affect them? Or was no, that no? Only the lights just on the personality. They just switched yeah. personalities. Yeah, yeah the, the lights only affected Kevin, uh, or the horde. Um, yeah, I just I, there were just too many holes, and and then the whole, I like we go to the ending here now. Um, yeah. In regards to the ending, so. It was cool, the fight scene. I enjoyed the fight scene as they were going back and forth. I wish it were longer. I wish it were a little more. Um, but I did enjoy what, what they had going on. But this whole concept that... I, I never bought into the idea that just a little bit of water was enough to, to be 
uh, his weak his weak spot to where he literally if he gets with water he can't even stand like that yeah that bothered me uh, to that point and so this this guy comes over and then tries to drown him or doesn't try drowns him in a a A freaking pothole puddle like that that yeah like i can get like the weakness being like he could drown like that's a thing that you know if he's underwater and you hold him there he could drown yeah sure that makes you know that seems like a believable thing but the fact that just like you know when he takes a shower (laughs) waters his kryptonite is like Like suddenly he can't stand because he you know decided to take a hot shower or a bath like aren't our bodies like 80 percent water or something like that yeah (laughs) yeah right it's like (laughs) that that to me was extremely unbelievable um and uh and then with uh that it took them that long to shoot him like one sniper bullet in the abdomen was enough to to take him down which i well, get. they had to they had they to had shoot to him when he was not the beast <laughs> yeah. yeah i thought they did shoot him when he was the beast no they shot him when he was kevin when he was kevin no the the girl did when he you know in the last movie she shot him with a shotgun twice yeah, um, when he and he still the, had the scars. He only well, does he, had the marks on him. Didn't he only have the scars when he was in beast mode, though? Maybe I don't know if I. Ever I thought I. I, I don't. I, don't know. I, I, I felt like his that, little marks but... went away when he was not the beast. I don't but know. That would be it, interesting because that would go it, along with their whole like you know the one personality needs insulin, you know the other one can't eat cheese or whatever. <laughs> like, well, but even even from that standpoint, she shot him with a shotgun. Close range with a shotgun, tiny little pellets. Okay, I can get maybe as a beast, he he could survive that. Uh, I mean, that's what a, that's what the doctor lady uses as her like, oh, you know, his old cartridge like that. You know, they rationally explain that stuff away to you. you right, know. and I get I get why maybe the beast could could withstand that, but a sniper bullet, I. I don't, I don't, again, I, it's just one of those things that well, t- apparently never I don't know. buy. Yeah. yeah, I don't buy. And let's, uh, like, one of my big problems, and I alluded this to this in the non-spoiler review, was how much they were explaining things. Yeah. When you're having this big confrontation and you take 30 seconds out for his son to run up and be like, no, but you have to think about the parents because the parents and the comic, and every time, every time they talk about something in the movie and they reference the comic books, it's verbatim every single time they talk about well in comic books when this and this and this happens yeah that means this in our world and every time they they stop the movie dead in its tracks and explain well in comics superman didn't wear tights or something like that and i understand their their obsession with the comic books but they they're stopping to explain things when they could probably just show show them you can you can probably come to that reveal about it about his dad dying on the train that mr glass um crashed uh with david in a different way than having the son burst in and take 30 seconds to explain it all to him and stuff well like that. they explain it and then after they explain it they show it yeah. like you don't need both yeah. like just show me yeah or when uh the whole thing that the uh the doctor Sarah Paulson and and Samuel L have this thing where they're talking about um uh that she's using the comic books as a reason to explain the secret societies that there's always these secret societies out there that try to take down the the villains and the superheroes and stuff like that they're using that that comic book excuse again or the that device i guess to for the um their explanation for it and then he uses that same comic book device oh no this isn't a a climax or a sequel this is an origin story story and all that stuff so they're very heavily trying to trying to tie this into comic book movies but they're it's well they're they're heavy handed in the way that they're doing comic books aren't just comic books there's some form of ancient history yeah yeah that's telling us more than it's just like it's not a children's entertainment like this is history but it's just being uh you know, exaggerated. Yeah. 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 I agree. I, I just, I didn't, I, I just, 
I didn't feel that it flowed in a way that that I enjoyed it. And the ending was more than sufficient to make me go. I'm good. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need it. I actually kind of liked what they did with the um, as much as I'm railing on. I just don't like the way that they did it. But I, I there's conceivably a universe where I would have liked um, this movie and and the uh, the whole secret society reveal. I just felt like they did it poorly. Yeah, well, I think yeah. I would have been OK with the secret society had they just presented it differently. Um, I laid some groundwork earlier in the movie, maybe instead of just having it. All of a sudden, she says, take my hand. And then now yeah. it's this gigantic well, reveal and all that stuff. I don't oh, he brushes which... up against her and like, all right, we can talk now, everybody. You know, those two people left and everybody in the room is apparently part of the secret society. Well, it's like they saw the the shamrock tattoo. I don't remember who saw it. Somebody in the in the movie saw the shamrock and like their eyes got really big because it's like they had seen it before somewhere else. And I'm like, I don't remember having where we should have seen this or known what the shamrock. Well, it's it's was. him. He touches her and gets yeah. the premonition and, you know, they see it on the wrist. And then when he's being drowned by the guy, yeah, he sees that's when he sees the shamrock. The cuff, again. He sees the, the shamrock. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I got you. I don't know. I, I I wasn't a fan of it. I didn't. I didn't think it was that great. And I think I, it's. It, uh, I didn't think it was an appropriate ending. It it didn't handle Bruce Willis's character the end the end to his character yeah, at all. I, I'm fine with them all dying actually if they if they gave them like their their send off I guess. But he just gets drowned in a shallow puddle by some no name yeah. SWAT some, guy. Yeah, and he doesn't SWAT get team member any four. sort of yeah any sort of send off. Or anything like that. This character that has started the franchise and has been around for 19 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that you're supposed to be, that the audience is supposed to be on his side. And he just gets drowned in a puddle with little fanfare. Yeah. Nope, I agree. I agree. I, uh, just uh, anticlimactic for me. Yeah. But, all right. Well, gentlemen, thanks for sticking around for the spoiler episode. Appreciate it. Uh, we want to thank everybody who did stick around. Anybody who had a chance. Hey, hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gave you a little insight and, uh, and uh, we'll see what your thoughts were in regards to it. Per usual, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, whatever. Uh, we have several uh, podcast platforms, including iTunes and Google Play. And uh, this was an exciting night for us. We appreciate it. We will see you guys next week uh, when we talk whatever movie we decide to talk about then. See you then. Peace out. Bye.